Hey guys, I just wanted to um, to run run through charging a system with R22 real quick. Um, probably gonna be a pretty short video, but um, just for you guys that have started out with 410A and haven't really had much experience with R22, just wanted to show you what the pressures look like, what they should look like, and um, how to correctly charge these systems. All right, so I got all my stuff hooked up, um, and this is how I'm charging with the, with the probes. I got the charging T on there with a line going to my R22 drum. And if you want to look at the pressures, you can see it right. So we're running 60 on the suction line. 207 on the head um, definitely a little low looks like it might be about a pound pound and a half short um, you see the suction line temperature isn't really bad but it's off just a little um, whenever you're charging R22 systems in the summer you're usually going to be between 70 and 80 psi on the suction um, one of the best ways to do R22, in my opinion, is to get it close to that number, fill your suction line or watch your temperature, and when that thing floods back and gets super cold, you're usually right on the money. So it's, you have a little more play with R22 than you do 410. So um, get it close to 70, start watching your line temp, and once you see that thing flood back, you're usually golden. Also with uh, R22, you always want to uh, charge with the vapor, not the liquid. So always keep your drum standing up. And we're going to go ahead and get this started. You'll notice also if you're used to charging a 410A, this it, um, it, the refrigerant goes out much slower because it's not uh, pushing the liquid out, it's just the vapor. So um, it will take a little longer. You can flip it over and do a liquid charge, but you have to do it super slow. and. Um, it's just not recommended. I, I would recommend just taking a little more time and doing it uh, with the vapor charge. And you do lose pressure on your can pretty easy, so sometimes you got to just stop for a minute, let it uh, warm back up a little bit. let it get to about um, 12 13 ounces and then I'm gonna stop it and see how it looks from there all right so I stopped it at 13 ounces uh, close to a pound if you look at the suction right now we're right at 70 Line temp 60 and dropping. Your saturation is about 41, so that's perfect. Um, and you can see the temp on that suction line is really starting to drop. So we'll sit here and watch this, see where it gets to, and go from there. Subcooling is really close. Um, should be around 12. This is 14. It's fine. Um, line temp has dropped dramatically, 42 degrees. So I'm gonna put just another touch in it. Um, well, maybe not. It looks like it's gonna be pretty good right there. I might add just a little bit after letting it run for a little while. I'm gonna let it run for about 15 minutes and then reevaluate. I lied to you. The actual subcooling is set to 17 on here so if you see that uh, indoor txv subcooling 17 so that's where we're going to try to be at right now it's back down to about 13 so we'll let it run a little bit longer and then 
I might have to bump a little more in it. All right, guys, so we've been letting this thing run for about 15 minutes now. Um, still at 13 ounces. Looks like it's gonna be the money. Our subcooler right now is 17. Suction 69. Great line temperature 42. Saturation's 40. And it's probably about 80 degrees outside right now. So we got it dead on the money. All right, guys. So we got that all finished up. Um, and I told you wrong again on the uh, the outdoor temperature is about um, 75 degrees. So with it being right at 70, hitting 69 sometimes, um, head pressure on R22 should always be in the low 200s. Um, super hot day, it can, it can get around three, but um, you're not gonna see any pressures anywhere close to 410A. So um, 70, 70, 75 degrees, you're always right around 70 on the suction. Um, when it gets much warmer outside, 85, 90 and up, your your suction temp can be anywhere from you know 78 to 84, 85. Um, should never be over that though, no matter how hot it is. Um, if you see pressures, well, your head pressure is super high, um, well over 300. You're gonna you want to check the coil first outside, um, just to see if it's got any debris in it or if it's stopped up some, but. I know this wasn't uh, super in depth, but I just wanted to show a quick video on charging with R22 and just so you can get a, an idea and a feel for um, what the pressures look like, what they should look like and how to charge and how it's just a little different than 410A when it comes to charging as well as the, um, the pressures. So much lower pressures. R22, you can really get it really close without having to be so precise like you do 410A. Um, like I was saying, when you get that, usually with 22, you when you're filling it, the line temp will always stay around 70, 68, 66, until you get it where it should be. And then you'll see the, um, the line temp just shoot straight down really quick. And when it does that, you know you're always really close. <clears throat> so you can, um, you don't have to be as dead on as you do with 410A. But hope this helps and um, we'll see you next time.